Oh, uh, well, hi again. Uh, my name is Greg, and welcome to chapter 10 uh, in my 1949 P3 Rover restoration story. Can't quite believe I've got to 10 chapters, but uh, anyway, I have, and uh, there'll be a few more to come. Uh, so, in this chapter, I'm going to cover um, some of the work that I've done on my car uh, to prepare it for, for repainting. Uh, mostly, I'm going to cover the, the paint stripping that I've done on the outside of the car. Um, I hope it's of interest. Uh, I guess if, uh, you know, if, if you're contemplating uh, doing something similar, it might be informative. Uh, I hope so. Um, in terms of uh, the amount of work that I covered, I, I didn't um, paint strip the whole of the outside of the car. I've just done uh, the bits of the car that I can uh, remove and then put back on again. Uh, so, for example, I've uh, I removed all four uh, mud guards, uh, paint stripped them, put them back on again. Uh, remove all four doors and, and the boot lid. Uh, the remainder of the paint stripping I'm just going to leave to the restoration workshop that, I, that I've uh, actually taken my car to now. Um, I just figured it was just a little bit too messy and a little bit too difficult to uh, to, to do um, that part of the body here at, at, at home. Uh, the bits of the uh, the car that I could take off at least I could I, I could sort of set it up and I could have a you know, a, a, a plastic uh, tap hole and underneath it and, and, and not make too much mess. Um, anyway, uh, on with the show. <laughs> I've taken a few shots just to show what I was starting off with before doing the paint stripping. Uh, as you can see, the paint actually doesn't look too bad. Um, if anything, it probably looks a little better in this photo than it did, does in real life. It's actually a little faded and just, just not at the standard that I want for the, I guess, the level of restoration that I'm after. This shot just shows the pinstriping that's uh, painted uh, around the car. I'm pretty sure this is an original feature, although I'm also pretty sure this isn't the, the original version of the pinstriping. It's just not all that well done. Okay, I'm stripping the second of the front guards now. Um, I've got the, the guard just uh, strapped to a ladder uh, with a couple of bits of wire just to keep it still. Uh, and the process is simply just to lay the, the paint stripper, which is like a gel, on really thickly. So I, I just go over it several times to make sure I've got good coverage. Well, here we are. I've left it oh, for the, about half an hour. And as you can see, the um, paint stripper is, uh, is doing its job. Um, so I'll probably start the scraping it off soon. I might just give it a little bit longer, uh, but it's, uh, it's certainly getting there. I'll we'll just um, try this bit, see how it goes. Uh, it does need a little longer, I think, but but uh, as I said, it's getting there quite soft now. Now as I mentioned before the trick is to lay on the paint stripper pretty thick and then leave it to do its job uh, and, and sort of avoid the temptation of sort of getting in there too early and try to scrape it off. If you do that you'll just end up sort of scraping off uh, you know, uh, the superficial layers and then you just end up uh, having to do, redo it and redo it and use a, a way more paint stripper than, uh, than you really needed to. Okay, here I am back in my shed. I, you, can, you can see the two front guards here, which have, uh, well, whilst I've had those off the car to, to work on the front suspension and steering, I've uh, uh, stripped them down to bare metal. Uh, and they're looking, uh, I reckon, quite lovely, really.
you know, now onto the bonnet. Uh, by this stage I've probably left the stripper for about 20 to 30 minutes and you can see it's uh, really done quite a bit of work already. I think from memory the bonnet took about two coats of stripper to get to this point. It was a relatively easy part to strip uh, due to the fact that it's fairly flat. And yeah, it's looking interesting. It's a bit of a process of discovery uh, as, as you get the paint off. Yeah, in this shot you can see a, a small round patch there where the, the metal's a different colour. I think what's happened there is uh, it, it's been repaired and uh, it's uh, actually a bit of what, what's known as lead wiping where, where they've actually just repaired a small dent in it. Not sure if that would have been a crash repair or, or was it maybe even done in the factory. In this shot I'll just focus in on a small part of the, the bonnet. Uh, it's interesting as you can see or just see uh, some numbers there. I'm not really sure but I think it probably refers to the, the grade of steel that was used. This is just a shot with some of the paint strip parts put back on the car. So that was the process I did. I didn't want to sort of take off everything in one go. So I'd, I'd take a guard off, put it, strip it, put it back on uh, and just uh, keep on doing that with, uh, with the panels. Again in this shot you can see some sort of colour variation in the bare metal uh, and again that's due to the areas of the panels that have been uh, lead wiped. Uh, I had to be quite careful when I was actually paint stripping those parts because obviously the, the lead's quite soft and I, I didn't want to mark it when I was uh, scraping the paint off. Uh, just one of the side panels before stripping you can see the, the pinstripe there. Just a shot of the back of the car with the rear guards off. Uh, I think by this stage I would have just about had them uh, ready to put back on again. As I went along with this process I replaced all the old bolts which are in many cases pretty rusty and, and hard to remove with the all, all, all new bolts. And now for the doors. Now again I just uh, took them off while one door at a time. They weren't too hard to get off. It was just uh, a couple of pins to remove uh, on the hinges and then uh, yeah, the, the doors can just be lifted off. I laid the paint stripper on pretty thick and as you can see I've covered the glass really just with a view to try and avoid any of the paint stripping gel getting inside the door uh, where I didn't actually want to do any paint stripping. This shot uh, showing the door after the paint stripper had been on for a while. As you can see it really sort of crinkles up. Uh, in some ways that actually does create a bit of a problem because then it doesn't really get through to the deeper layers of the paint. Uh, but not much you can do about it. Pretty much the last part I tackled was uh, the, the boot lid. Um, so here you can see just after I put the paint stripper on. Now this was a very exciting day and one that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. I'd finally sort of uh, got all the work done that I was planning to do myself and uh, the car's uh, just about on its way to a, a restorer now to, to do the work that I either can't or, or, or won't do myself. In this shot you can see the temporary windscreen that I made uh, for, for uh, transporting the car. Uh, just made out of plywood. 
I, I put that in there just uh, so that I didn't have a howling gale inside the car as it was transported and I didn't want to put the, the windscreen back in until uh, you know, the body had been repaired. I think I was starting to experience some uh, separation anxiety at this point. Uh, I followed the car all the way to Mount Barker and the Adelaide Hills. Kind of hard to describe really, it's just uh, sort of difficult to, in, in a sense, sort of let go of the project after you know, I'd just done so much work on it myself. So here's the car in Mount Barker, arrived uh, safe and sound. It was uh, really nice to, to get here and sort of catch up with uh, some of the tradesmen who'll be working on my car. Yeah, they actually seem generally enthusiastic about working on it and really interested in the project. Uh, yeah, which was nice. Okay, hi again. Uh, well, that'll be it for chapter 10. I uh, hope, hope you've enjoyed it and, and possibly found it informative. Uh, I'll cover probably some other work that I've done on, on the body uh, in, in the next chapter and I've also got a, a few other bits and pieces to cover perhaps in some other chapters uh, for example uh, a long time ago now I did some work on the on the heater box on my car uh, so I'll, I'll cover that uh, and I'll probably cover um, some of the work that I did uh, in getting bits and pieces re-chromed and then uh, re reassembled, you know, things like the headlights and uh, side lights and that sort of thing. Uh, but uh, anyway, stay tuned and I'll see you next time.